We are in Tunis uh, for the French President Emmanuel Macron's visit. Uh, hello, Youssef Shahid. Uh, thank you, Mr. Prime Minister, for having us here in Tunis in your residency. Tunisia has seen riots here at the beginning of January. One person died, dozens of injured. The, the cause of this was exasperation. Cost of living is too high. To, unemployment is too high. 30% of young people are unemployed. A social movement has been created. There's a hashtag on Twitter. What, what are you expecting? What are people expecting? How can you give them some hope? First of all, thank you for this invitation. As regards the demonstrations, I think we need to distinguish between uh, demonstrations in, as in any democratic and free country. We have thousands of demonstrations every year. And we've heard what they have to say. We understand their demands and the problems they've raised, but there's also hooligans. They have nothing to do with demonstrations. When you loot public buildings, that is not what I call a demonstration. Tunisia is a free country. There's no need to do that sort of thing, to loot buildings at night. That has nothing to do with demonstrations. As regards the events that took place, indeed, we recently adopted a budget. The opposition protested, and any organized protest. But it's anger, Mr. Prime Minister. It's, uh, it, the young people are angry. 30% of young people with degrees are jobless. What's been done in the past seven years uh, to help well, them? You know, when people burn a thousand cars but, but you're on not New Year's Eve question, in France, you're not asking, what that have you has done nothing for young to people? do with tradition. Uh, there's the same type of problem in uh, some French cities. Just seven years after the revolution, there's a lot of expectations. Young people are hoping for an improvement in their standard of living, and they're frustrated. Of course, we understand that. We've, we've heard that. Tunisia succeeded in its democratic transition. I've said that already, but we're still lagging behind as regards the economic transition. And indeed, it's important that our country be part of a modern democracy. One measure that's been taken in favor of young people. We have a plan. I've announced a youth employment plan. Obviously, growth is important. We weren't able to create enough jobs for those young people in the recent period. During the five or six years after uh, the revolution, it was it's only two percent today. Growth. Actually. Well, we, need, we needed to boost the economy. We had a 2% growth rate in 2017. We expect 3% in 2018. As regards uh, growth, we have an employment plan that was adopted uh, uh, last week in the Council of Ministers. We've set up a self-employment scheme, uh, other job plans. 2,000 microcredits for young people who want to set up companies. And so, indeed, there is a very high rate of unemployment amongst uh, graduates, and today, 40 percent. 6,000 Tunisians have left for the jihad. I think this is the the uh, largest foreign contingency. It's, it's that foreign. Doesn't, it's that's despair that not the figure them. that we have. It's the despair that pushes these young people towards uh, yes, terrorism. Yes, indeed. And that's why, in our fight against terrorism, and Tunisia has uh, been quite successful, we cannot simply concentrate on security. We've made considerable efforts in the last three years to make our borders secure. We have some 500 kilometers of border shared with Libya, and therefore uh, that has an impact on our security situation, but that's not enough. We have to fight against extremism and terrorism, not just based on a security policy, but education, culture, youth policies, in order to avoid that these young people want to cross the sea and be enrolled by terrorist organizations as well. So obviously, as regards Macron's visit, 
we are working on programs together to help these young people create jobs, etc. We'll talk about Emmanuel Macron in, in just a minute, but let's talk about Libya first. Uh, it, Libya is chaos. So this is your neighboring country. The uh, special envoy for the UN, uh, Hassam Salame, is talking about elections in 2018. Do you really think that that's credible when you see that uh, there are there's fighting every day, that there's still no uh, transition government, there's no uh, electoral voting system? Is that really credible? Well, I don't know whether it's credible or not. But what I can say is that the situation in Libya is a priority. Security in Libya has a direct effect on security in Tunisia. And therefore, our president, uh, El Sebsi, has launched an initiative. The situation can no longer continue as it is. We have, uh, we're in favor of uh, diplomacy, uh, and we have to work with the various factions in Libya. It's true that we don't believe that the solution is going to uh, so appear in the near future, but... Done. There are some part of some points that have taken... You said just a minute ago that... Well, a lot of things. That, uh, for example, security has improved. Uh, Tunisians feel safer. There's better cooperation between the police and the army. But there's another problem that's in, uh, very important in Tunisia, too, is corruption. You are the hero in the fight against uh, corrup corruption. You're very po popular for this. Many people have been arrested for corruption. And yet, uh, the pr Tunisian Parliament uh, passed a law in September that protects uh, protects uh, legislators uh, for, uh, from being charges being pressed for corruption. Is that not contradictory? Well, why did we begin this fight against corruption? It's extremely important because Tunisian democracy. Uh, well, corruption is a threat to to our democracy, and therefore. Corruption and trafficking and terrorism, these but what about the contradiction? are part of a triangle. As regards the Tunisian civil service, we have suffered for many years now uh, from a problem because of civil servants who, under the dictatorship, received orders uh, where that they had to uh, obey, but they didn't receive anything in return for themselves. And they were, found themselves in a situation where they had to make certain decisions. If we have a very low rate of uh, um, absorption of European loans, that's due to these uh, problems. And it's important that people trust the administration and that the money lent to the country is fully absorbed by the economy. Now, the Emmanuel Macron's visit, what is the most powerful measure that you're hoping for? Is it to the conversion of the Tunisian debt into investment? I um, I believe that it's the political aspect that's uh, the most important. Democracy in Tunisia, you know, we're a very old country, some 3,000 years of history. We've spent, we've had some rough times since the revolution. And today, uh, the economic issues are essential. And the security problem uh, was added on to our difficulties and made it much more difficult for us to develop our democracy. We're expecting a strong support from France. France is a traditional partner of Tunisia's, and therefore we're hoping for a support to this young Tunisian democracy. You know, you don't have a new democracy just an hour away from French borders every year. And it's extremely important. Emmanuel Macron is a young president. He just celebrated his 40th birthday. You yourself are 41. Do you think it's important that there be a new generation in order to for a, get a fresh start? Well, it was the initiative of our president, uh, El Sebsi, who uh, entrusted me with this task. And indeed, uh, it's important that there be a new generation of politicians who believe in democracy. The president of the Republic, uh, Mr. President Essepsi, is 91 years old. So it's, we don't know if he's going to run again for another mandate. In 2019, he'll be 93 years old. Do you think that if President Essepsi did run again, you would, would you say, yes, he's legitimate because he's got a lot of experience? Or would you say 93 is maybe a good time to retire? Listen. 
you can ask him that question. I've already said that the president contributed a lot to Tunisian democracy, uh, along with uh, Tunis, Nida Tunis. It was, uh, we organized free elections, the people elected him. So it's up to him to decide. He is a very important person in Tunisian democracy. He is the person who enabled us to uh, have a more peaceful situation after 2013. The president's son had Nida Tunis, the main party in the coalition. Some people suspect the president to want it, of wanting to set up a new dynasty. What do you answer to this? What's your answer to this? No, that's false. That's false. I don't believe that at all. As I said, it was our president who made this democratic experiment possible. And he's, uh, he's going to be part of a democratic system. And you, Yosef Shahed, uh, some people in Tunis uh, say that you will be running for president uh, in 2019. The Rashid Hanoushi from Ahneda says that uh, this is uh, this is the case and that you're going to be leaving the, to, to uh, start Listen, running. Is that true? Well, given the responsibilities I'm carrying today, I'm really not thinking about uh, uh, those elections in the future. I have 240,000 young unemployed uh, graduates. We have an agreement with the IMF. I really don't have a second to reflect on 2019. Maybe some other people have that ambition. You can ask them, but it's not at all my case to be reflecting about the future. We have a lot of things to do right now. And, you know, things are looking up. Tourism is coming back. Uh, the economy is doing better. So we have to continue working on the economy so that 2018 be the last tough year for Tunisia. Thank you, Youssef Shahed. Thank you for uh, meeting with us today in your residency here in Tunis. Uh, of course, uh, we will be watching on France, France 24, hour by hour, we'll be watching Emmanuel Macron's visit. Thank you for being with us today.